So we're going to do two things this morning. We're going to do a, um, an inspection, an early spring inspection, and we're going to do that on the biggest colony we have, which is that one over there. And, and then we're going to install a package of bees in that blue colony over there. Now, I installed four packages Thursday in uh, that cold day. And, um, and rather than leave those packages, all of them to install today, which is what I was going to do, it was so cold I figured, let me get some in the colonies and then let them settle in there. So I want to show you a little technique about how you can tell what is going on inside of a colony that you just installed, the bees just installed, by uh, just looking at a bottom board. So come on, follow me. All right, so all of the comb that I used in this yard is drawn comb. All right, so it's comb that I had from years of beekeeping. It's not new foundation, but uh, and, and new foundation would work differently. Bees would have to draw the comb out. You have to feed them heavy syrup. This is not a good time of year to try that. All right, for especially for inexperienced beekeepers, it's difficult for you to manage an early spring installation like this is early, right? You, most packages are coming a couple of weeks from now in April and it'll be nice and warm and you won't have a problem using foundation and syrup. But in this case, I had to resort to drawn comb. Now, it's, it's a luxury. It's not a, I didn't resort to it. It's a real luxury to have all this drawn comb. And I had categories of drawn comb. Drawn comb with nothing in it. Drawn comb with pollen or food. That's what bees use for their protein source. And then a drawn comb with nectar, right? Some of the nectar fermented. I mean, not fermented, but crystallized over the, over the winter as I kept these combs, right? So I arranged the brood box in a specific way. I put two empty combs in the center. Then right on the side of that, I put two feed combs, combs, uh, combs with food in them. And then um, the uh, stores, the honey stores and carbohydrates stores, I put on the outside. All right, so I, I manage them that way because I want the queen to be able to lay in the middle when she comes out of the cage. Then I want food right next to that when she starts to raise brood. And then I want carbohydrate in the colony where they can go find it. So what have they done with the comb I put in there? Right? You, you got to ask yourself that question, but you can't really figure that out unless you have a board in there, a drop board in there that'll show you. So come on over here. This is the crystallized comb I put in there, the honeycombs. Remember I said I put the stores over further than the middle? They, they're cleaning this area out, right? That's the middle. Those, those are the, the blank combs I put in. The worker bees in this colony are clearing these comb out. So, that, so what can happen? So the queen can lay. They're cleaning those cells, yeah. right? Because a queen's not going to lay in a, in a comb that's been hanging around all winter. You know, she has her priorities. And, and a clean comb is one of them. Those are wax cappings, right? So he knows the difference. This is wax capping. What do you think they're uncapping on the outside? Honey. Honey. That's why, that's why I put the honey. So they're telling you a little story. They're saying, hey, we, we got this, right? We know what you did. And we're going to use this honey. We're uncapping it. We're cleaning these cells out so the queen can lay. And over here, there was some, you put some junk in there, some crystallized honey. We don't want that. We're going to kick that out of the colony. All right. Now you have to ask yourself if you've ever um, encountered any uh, interaction with an insect that's more intelligent than this. Because this is the result of hundreds of years of evolution, millions maybe, where I can take bees that were raised somewhere else in the world, down in George, Claxton, Georgia, let's say, assemble a, a bunch of bees out of different sources and different colonies, put a queen with them that they don't know, dump them up here in a package in Connecticut, and they know exactly what to do with everything that we gave them. Right? Now that's, that's miraculous enough, in my opinion, to be a beekeeper. You observe these things all of the time. Observational beekeeping is the only way to conduct your practice of beekeeping. You, they will show you what they're doing. You have, your job is to listen and not try to prescribe what you think might be right or wrong for them. Prescriptive beekeeping won't work. Observational beekeeping will teach you everything you need show to know. You like what, what they need? 
like down the road or things like that. Yeah. Like th I've never done this before, so I'm <coughs> new, but I was just kind of curious. Like so, like you said, through observation, they're kind of saying, "Hey, I need you to kind of set set it up a certain way or something." Well, yeah, the, you when you have to look inside the colony for that. Right. And in that, you can see whatever if there's some uh, deficiencies inside the colony, you can recognize them. And you can always just, you know, if you're looking for how much honey is in a colony, all you have to do is lift it up to figure that out. All right, so that's an example of what they've done. And now this is since Thursday, all right? So the queen was in a cage in this colony when I put her in. She's probably still in it. Um, and uh, she hasn't been released yet, but maybe she has. And so they're on their way. Now, well, let's go take a look at the same kind of example of a colony that overwintered. All right, so this is one that now made it through the winter. No one did anything to that colony, but I did have a bottom board in it that will show you the same thing. Bill, how many years could you use those frames before you should change them out? Or do you just keep <coughs> using them over and over again? Well, I use mine, uh, you know, I try to, I migrate the darker combs to the outside and then I move them out about when they're, when they're, when they're perfect, I think. Because they just smell so great at that point. The queen loves them. The colony loves them, but they're too old. In our environment, there's a lot. In, right here, there's a couple of um, apple orchards almost within eyesight. And so they spray, you know, 35, 40 times a year. Pesticides, fumic you know, fungicides, all different kinds of uh, mixes to keep the apples going. And these bees go to the those apple blossoms, first of all. They don't spray during that time. But then they let the understory grow and there's a bunch of dandelion that come up. The bees go to that and that's where they pick up their pesticide load. Um, they've been really healthy over here. Somehow they've avoided it. But I know that those chemicals that they use are oil-based, uh, comb wax is lipophilic, meaning that it will, it'll accumulate oils and uh, so it'll accumulate toxins that are oil-based. This has a very long, interesting bottom board. So you take a look at this. You can come around the back or come around the sides and take a look at it. <clears throat> this is perfectly clean when I put it in Thursday. There's no comb here. So these combs are in this colony this way. All right, so you see like a little break between the activity. They went to town. Right? They cleaned up everything that was in there. This is a bunch of old comb. Again, wax cappings. They're using the stores I gave them. And then they're cleaning out comb in this area for um, the queen to begin to lay. I direct release this queen. I didn't put her in a cage and let, you know, I didn't do the traditional installation you're gonna see later on. I, I actually direct release the queen. So <clears throat> you can actually judge that if you know what you're doing. You can figure out if the bees have already accepted the queen or not by how they act toward her when she's in the cage. I'll show you that later on. All right, so I'm, Showing you this from there and here so you get the idea that, you know, you, your bees are talking to you. Here's some uh, sugar that was crystallized. They took it out. So they don't like to eat crystallized sugar. All right, so this colony overwintered on its own. And it's queen right. If, it, if the wind stops and we get a good temperature, you see tons of bees coming out of this colony. Where are they in the colony? Anybody want to hazard a guess? This was this board was in this way. Where's the bee population in this colony? Yeah, it's down the bottom, but where are down the bottom? Which side of the colony is it on? It's on this side, right? See, it's on the side I'm on, right? Because that's where the activity is. So it's some, some crystallized honey that crystallized naturally in their own combs. They took it out. They don't want it in there. They're opening and cleaning up cells. They're bringing in pollen. See all of this? That's all pollen. These are that's all pollen um, pellets that didn't make it into cells. Right? So about 20% of the pollen that bees collect that you see them bring them back never makes it into the cell. They kind of like they have to flip it off their back legs to get it into a cell and then pack it in with their head and it just doesn't make it sometimes. It's not enough to to be a problem for the colony because of course if they're short on pollen they just go collect more. All right, so, and they have beautiful sources of pollen right now. What are they? Anybody know? Red maple, Red maple is out. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, a grayish green, a greenish, gray pollen. Yeah, 
Skunk cabbage is out, and if you can see bees collecting skunk cabbage, how, how do you know? You don't know, okay, they got a stripe on them, right? They get a racing stripe, right? Because they got to go inside that skunk cabbage and they brush against, they walk in, but then they brush against that little stigma. That's, I don't know what it is. It's actually strange and beautiful. Um, and then they get a bunch of pollen on, they roll around in there, they come out, they look like they've, uh, they're covered with pollen. So again, that's just observation, right? I know my bees are on skunk cabbage for two reasons. One is, the only one of the only thing that's blooming this time of year with that beautiful yellow pollen is skunk cabbage, and but I'm watching them at the entrance, so I know they're on it. I don't have to go in. I don't have to follow them to the skunk cabbage. I know they're on it. Observation, all right? All right, cool. When you say overwintered, do they just stay like this all winter out here, or do you bring them somewhere? Or no, no, this they stayed right out they here. Stay like this. Yeah, yeah, they stayed here, but I had I had uh, insulation on them. But there, they stay just like this. Yeah, yeah. No bees uh, can tolerate cold down to about negative twenty, and um, they can stay. Yeah, I, I had insulation sleeves that went all the way around the hive. I took them off, so we could um, open up the boxes. This is a teaching unit. I took them off uh, Thursday. Yeah, but you don't have to. Uh, but I know I never take the insulation off the top. Right, so I always leave the insulation. This is an insulated top. I'll show you one of those. I'll show you an alternative that you can actually um, purchase that you can also insulate your own colony without building a special top like this. This is a special top I built. And do, they, do they just stay in there all winter or do they ever leave? Do bees ever leave the hive during the winter? Yeah. Or they, oh, they do? Yeah, they don't leave and go forage though. They come out and they um, will uh, defecate on your clothes. Oh. <laughs> your car and your neighbor's car everything yeah the bench you can go over there and take a look at the bench so they come out for cleansing flights so when it gets to 50 degrees or something they'll come out for a cleansing flight and then they'll go back in they also come out in the winter time to get water off the top or any place they can find liquid water and you probably won't know the reason why they do that why would bees drink water in the middle of the winter well first of all they're they can be a little dehydrated from the cluster that they're in so they're thermal regulating in this cluster they can get a little dehydrated but the second reason and the main reason they collect uh, water in the winter time is so they have to thin honey so from about the solstice the queen's laying little patches of eggs right so the queen has been laying eggs since the end of december early january right not significant amounts and sometimes she backs off and then she starts again and she backs off but she's been laying eggs pretty consistently in little patches all the way during that time to feed brood you can't give them honey right they have to thin it with water all right so you that's a good sign when your bees are coming out and gathering water on the top of the colony or going someplace else because you know that they're feeding brood right so that queen is queen right another another sort of a little way of observing behavior right so when the queen starts to lay eggs in late December, it has to do with the increased sun. No. Do you answer that question and you're going to get a Nobel Prize for it? We don't know the answer. <laughs> we don't know. Um, there's all kinds of speculation. Gravity changes. The angle of the sun changes. We don't know the answer to what occurs okay. to make a colony figure that out. But my guess is it's probably um, uh, in their genes that they get a certain period of time where they sense they can sense cold and that they know that it's time to start laying. And, but it ain't, it ain't sunlight, it ain't any of those other things. It's just something that they know how to do. Do you have warm or winter? Are the queen, they were not more active and the queen would not lay more actively? Yeah, she warm? would. Yeah, if it's warmer, she will lay a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, during that time. Well, you're going to see a colony. I think you're going to, we're going to open up a colony that has maybe nine or ten seams of bees. So that means, that means that it's almost full strength, and you're going to have to make certain that you have your veil on probably at that point because they're, you know, everybody, because they're going to, there's going to be a lot of bees flying. And they're not going to like me coming in there during this time, right? So um, What did you say? We're going to open up a hive that has what? Uh, nine or ten seams of bees. Full, full colony, you know, so. All right, so why don't we get to doing some bee work then? How about that? Yeah. All right, any more questions first? All right, so we're, we're, doing, a, we're doing a 
Spring inspection on a colony. What are we looking for? Live bees. Live bees. <laughs> but we already know that there's live bees, right? <laughs> because, um, because we see them flying out of the front. And a lot of them we see them flying. You, you don't have the advantage of knowing that, but I do. So I'm telling you, there's lots and lots of bees flying out of the front of this colony. It's the strongest one in the yard. Now, so we want evidence that, that we don't have, do we have to look and find the queen? No. 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 We just, yeah, we could find brood, right? Eggs. All we need to do is see one frame with eggs on it, and we already know we're good, right? The queen is laying because she had to be laying, unless we kill her on this inspection, which we could do, but we won't. Uh, we'll try not to. Um, those only her eggs are only eggs for how many days three so um, so that means that she's been there at least three days ago but we can tell if she laid an egg that day so there's a one day old egg in a cell there's a two day old egg in a cell and a three day old egg now how how do you think do you, any any idea how you might be able to tell the difference Position of the egg. The first day, the egg's up straight. Second day, it's tilted over a little bit. Third day, it's almost laying down. Then it lays right down to become a larva. All right? Doesn't hatch. These eggs don't hatch. They're not chicken eggs. They just, <laughs> they just fall over and become a larva. All right? They have a little coating on the outside called chorion. It just dissolves and they become a larva. All right? So, so um, one day is just going to be like a pinhead little white dot in the middle of the comb. Yeah, and you are yeah. going to have trouble seeing it. Yep. Go ahead. Two, second day. Second day. So this is going to take you a year to figure out. But, you know, but you'll be able to do it. So, you know, uh, and then, you know, seeing eggs and all that is like uh, you have to, you get a memory, a, a sort of an artistic memory for it. You get a feeling for it. After a while, you have a brain memory. So you can see eggs really easily after you've looked at 10 million of them. But, you know, it takes a while for you to learn that, for your body to learn it, for your mind to, to learn that. I'm going to show you today different ways um, to actually uh, find eggs. Is One way is to use your cell phone, like, like Scott has here. Take a picture of that frame, then go home and, um, and enlarge that photo and look and see if you have eggs in it. All right? So that's one way to do it. You can even tilt up a frame. Use your hive tool to have that frame tilted up. And then I'll smoke the front entrance. Right, and then, yeah, I can use I can use uh, this one here. I'll use this one. These are good. Yeah, leave that. Then I'm going to use the telescoping cover to push some smoke down into the colony. I'll show you how you do that. <clears throat> you lift one side of the cover up, put the smoke in like that, and then just push it down and. They're thoroughly smoked. Now, uh, depending on your um, <clears throat> preference, you can, uh, you know, uh, sing Mary Had a Little Lamb or... Okay, so we're going to take this off. See, this is an insulated cover. See? has insulation in it. Um, so you can actually see these bees. If you come over here, you can see the massive amount of bees that came out of the, out of the oh, yeah. winter in here. See them all? Lots. These are overwintered, huh? Yeah, these are overwintered bees, right? Wow. All right. Bees do exactly what they want with you, and here they just built wax right through this screen I have, so they just did that. Now, if we, when we look at this, when we open this, you're going to see comb on the other side of that. So there's comb hanging off of this, and what they're saying is you left these on too long, these shims, and there's space here. And what you did was you violated bee space. So bee space, anytime you violate bee space, the bees are going to draw comb, right, in that space. So you'll see it. So I'm going to smoke them off of it a little bit, hopefully. This is a, um, a winter uh, configuration. All right, so here. Mm -hmm. Okay, bees are going to start to fly now. All right, so I'm going to lift this off. This is not going to go back on. You're going to see the comb they built on the other side of this. See? 
See what they did? All right, and it's full of lay eggs and it's full of larva. And so that means that we have a live queen in there. So they decided to build a colony up in here in addition to what's down below. Now you can see where I, where I broke the comb. Look inside those cells, you'll see all different stages of larva. Oh my gosh, right on top. Yeah. Is, well, we got to make sure the queen's not here. Hold on. And then I can pass it around. I'll get the bees off of it and I can pass it around. You could have your own little example of what... Um, uh, I don't usually. If Sometimes I do for demonstration, but I don't really um, do it normally. So what are they drawing out here? Okay, so this is drone comb. All right, so they're making, the queen is laying unfertilized eggs in here that are, become, are going to become male bees, right, because they're fulfilling their obligation to the natural world. These bees are going to swarm. They, they're just telling you they're going to swarm. And the first indication that they're serious about it is when you see them building a lot of drone comb. Now, inside this colony is all structured comb, so they don't have a lot of room to build drone comb. They'd have to knock down worker cells and then build them up again for drones. But this space was open, free. So what is the first thing they do? They filled it. They filled it with drones, right? Because they know that they're going to have to reproduce, and their, their, their biological instinct is to, in the beginning of the spring is to draw out a bunch of drone comb. Right, if they can. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. You can tell by the size. Is it smaller? Bigger. All right, so drone comb is big. All right, so all of these, I can recognize the size of drone comb just by looking at it. You might be not be able to do that, but you can uh, take a look at this frame, pass it around if you want. Get the bees. Those bees are not likely going to sting you. They may though. All right, they're big, right? See how, how big they are? You can send it any way you want. You do not want to get your, um, now there's another one of these in there. Yeah, it's shaped like this. Now I'll show you how to lift the frame the easy way. I always put a plastic frame in my colonies if I can, because that one will always come out easy. Okay. Uh -huh. Right? Because they, it doesn't work the same as wood. So these bees are flying around and they're hitting me in the head and all of that, but they're not really that aggressive. Right? They might get that way. If you have two of these, you can, you can uh, wrestle them this way. So you pull up a little bit like that. And then you pull this one in the opposite direction and the frame will come out nice and level, see? Yeah. And then you can just grab it and pull it up. All right, now, <clears throat> this colony came through the winter with all of this beautiful honey. Now look at the difference in the size of that cell oh, versus, yeah, yeah. you see, that? that's yeah. a worker cell, yeah. but they, they, of course, they use a worker cell for many things. So they, can, is, they can raise brood in it. This is honey. This is all capped honey? So. This is all capped honey, right. And they put nectar in there, too. See, there's nectar in some of those cells. See them? So that's, they're, make, they're putting nectar in already. See, the it's in these, see the shiny stuff inside there? That's oh, all right nectar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, all nectar. Yeah. Right. So, so that's the, not capped, that's the nectar? That's no, nectar. no, no, no. This is capped honey, and it has nectar in the open cells. The, right, okay, the open cells are... Yeah, see, nectar. yeah. So you're like a bee magnet. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can't have them all over you. You can't have those bees. Well, I figured. You're trying to get bees from me? No, I'm trying to keep them away from everybody else. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think he's trying to steal them. Yeah. That's what I think. All right, so this is a comb. This is a frame of honey, right? So it's a store. It, they put stores on the end of the colony. They always do that, right? So there's another one right here. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Where's the where's the other top cover? Well, don't don't touch the comb. I won't. All right. All right. So I can now that I have one frame out, I can move these around a little bit. I'm not going to pull these end frames out. They're not interesting, right? They're going to be all honey, yeah. right? There's a honey frame here. There's a honey frame here. So did they have enough honey to go into the winter? Looks like yeah. it. Was that was that top box full of honey? Almost. And 
Did it have brood in it when it went in for the winter? Sure. Okay, the one I have didn't get any brood in the top. Of it. All it was was honey. Well, that's okay. The brood was in the bottom box then. Yeah, well, it didn't last. <laughs> Died on you. Okay, we're at, we're at a point now where this might get interesting. There might be something here. So I'm four frames over. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. All right, so I was just trying to clear that bee, but I, um, I smashed it. So its stinger went into my head, and then that'll give me alarm pheromone, and, you know, that's we're off and running. Uh <clears throat> We've smoked them enough at this point. We don't want to irritate the whole crap out of them. Okay, it's more honey. I'm not done with honey yet. Is there anything down there in that bottom? You know what they're going to make us work. You know what they're going to make us do, right? Pull the top box, and it's going to weigh 90 pounds. Is there, is there a firefighter around or anybody? Let's see what this is. Somebody's strong. <laughs> No, I'm not letting him near my bees. He, he, he wants more bees. He, he's trying to do something. I don't know. We're looking for, I wanted to try to show you um, what the colony would look like in the brood stage. There's, so this is pretty much all honey on this side. So in a good insulated colony, they obviously don't need all the honey they store, right? So that this colony, if it really did need 60 or 80 pounds of honey to get through the winter, it wouldn't have these frames of honey in it, right? They would have ate, eaten them. So that's another thing that, you know, you're going to hear lots of stuff and you're going to be going on Facebook and who knows what else, Instagram, TikTok, you'll be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And that's not where you get your information from because they'll mislead you a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Yes, it was, and so it was really well insulated, and that's why we're seeing a lot of that honey still in the colony, because they don't really need that much, even though they were a very big honey, very big colony. All right, let's try to get this top box off. Stop fooling around, because it seems like to me that the queen is down below. Uh, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna take some of this stuff off. This year is a little bit strange to predict, but they will start in May. Maybe the end of April this year. I put it in that bucket I have right here. See it? Where is it? Oh, there's a garbage bag here. Because you don't want to throw this around your bee yard. And uh, you can do whatever you want with it. You can make, you can save it and melt it and make candles and do whatever you want. Why don't we want to throw it around the yard? Because it attracts the things that you don't want in your yard. You don't want to advertise to um, uh, skunks and uh, possums and all that that you got a bunch of bees here. Because guess they like the uh, skunks eat bees. Yeah, this is a bare fence. Yeah, let's see if we still got honey out here. Shh, will you stop this? Is there brood here? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's just stacked with them. Um, oh, well, no, that should be brood. That's, uh, there should be eggs in that. Oh, bee bread, okay. So in this frame, you know. Okay, in this frame, they're clearing out a little place. This is now, so we, we picked this up this way, right? Yeah. So this is, they've, they've packed food in here, which is pollen in these cells. And so what's gonna, what we're going to see next is brood on this side. We're going to predict that. Because what they do, the way they build a colony naturally is they have, they put their, their protein stores right next to where they're going to raise brood because then they can just use it and turn around and feed brood. All right, they don't have to run around the whole colony. I don't see the queen here. Um, I doubt that she'll be right on this frame anyway. So let's lean this one up. And then uh, when you do lean a frame against something, 
you don't lean the comb up against any surface because if you do that you'll not you'll you'll um you'll scratch it and it'll start to leak honey all over your yard and you don't want that to happen either all right so make sure when you place your combs down you're you're That's not nice. Was... Okay, we're, we're going to have some brood here. I really don't want to pull the whole thing apart if I don't have to. Okay, we're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we already have, we have, so we have, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's drone comb here. See it? Yeah, that's good drone comb. And then there's, I'm going to try to shake this frame, although we'll, um, we're going to get more bees in the air at that point. This is totally laid out, beautifully laid out has drone on it, sealed brood, which is indication that um, she's been laying for quite a while, right? And on the bottom there, that <clears throat> That's, those are drone combs. So this, this right here, drone comb, that right there that's all drone, that? yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all drone right there. They build drone, and this time of year, they build drone comb between the bottom and the top box. Every place oh. they can, because they can't, unless there's drone comb on this frame already, they can't draw it out, right? They're, this is all. Uh, worker brew. Yeah, so we're going to shake the bees off this frame. How old is this bee? How what? She's two years. This is her second year. Oh, God, is, that's very easy to tell. That's drone comb there. Swarm cells are peanut shaped. Those aren't swarm. Those are those. These are drone comb. There aren't any indications of swarm cells yet. Now this queen may not even swarm. Who knows? We can't tell. All right. Okay. So we can pass this one around. <clears throat> and what you're going to see in here is a perfect example of how a queen lays. Right? She's laying in the center here first. Then she continues to lay all the way on the outside rim. So you see here is sealed brood. Some of it's emerged out of here, but then you would see um, larva in its different stages, right? There's, there's a different stage larva. There's one, two, three, four, and five different stages. That's growth stages. And then um, you'll see, and then eggs, right? So you'll see them all here. If you take a quick, if you take a look and take your time to look through it. I wish I had a bee brush. I would brush these bees off of here, which is like, Something I never do, but there is one. There's one in the shed? Yep. All right, who wants to look? If you grab a bee, so if, if you grab something in it and you grab a bee, it'll sting you. But then you will not drop that frame. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're clear. Can you show the frames to the camera when you're done? Sure. Yeah, it's got to them. Who wants it next? Okay, we're going to give you a little time to pass that baby around. What type of bees are these? Uh, uh, mutts. <laughs> Just like yours. Yeah. So if you paid more for a carniolan or an Italian, you didn't get that. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got mutts because they we... They look like mine. They're darker. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, they're, they're probably, if you did the genome on these bees, you'd find that they're probably around... Um, 40% Italian uh, ancestral heritage and about 40% um, Carniolan. Then there's a small percentage of, of um, a Caucasian bee in it. And then there's a little bit of uh, African genes maybe. So, this, you know, so that's what you get. I mean, you can't expect to get diversity when you've got a thousand queens making a million queens, right? So. Well, like, you know, somebody asked that earlier. So, yeah, so I will move darker comb out to this edge. Once it's vacant, then I'll, um, <laughs> then I'll change it out. Yeah. And I don't do that as, as often as other beekeepers do. So I don't particularly like to throw away drawn comb. No one does. Uh, but if I've got an active yard that's going to make comb, a lot of comb, then I have extra comb I can... I can substitute out for. Like those colonies that I installed over there, I'll have the second box, 
that I put on them when once they're established in the Queens Lane. I'll add another box. I'll put all foundation in all of those boxes and I'll have five colonies that draw out 10 comb a piece. I'll have 50 new comb. Okay, so Did that's you harvest honey from this box? No, nope, I don't harvest honey. You, okay. okay. Not from here. That, I, I was wondering all right. About so that. this is a teaching yard, so yeah. I don't do that. Now, if you don't harvest honey, you get big survival. Right, exactly. Because if you harvest the honey, what do you have to do? And if you don't do that, what happens? And most inexperienced beekeepers can't figure that out. It's not easy to figure out, do I have enough stores left in that colony to winter or not? So if you rob honey, that's what the term's called, you have to make certain that you have not damaged the colony's ability to be able to overwinter. All right? So if you put on honey supers and you rob that honey, and there's still honey in the, the bottom box or two boxes, uh, depends on how much honey's in the bottom box. That's the art of beekeeping. Yeah, that's the art of it. You have to understand that you have to have, you know, some honey in that bottom box, 50 pounds, maybe 70 pounds, who knows? You know, like how, it depends on how you winter your bees. In my case, I can probably get away with three or four frames of honey. At, because I wrap them. And I have insulated tops. All right, where's that frame? How are you guys doing? You, That's going to be, that's going to be, I leave them on all summer long and I'm also going to put this on, which is a product that is already an insulated cover. All right. So, and then this, this, you can put a regular telescoping cover over. You don't have to have one fancy one like that. So I'm going to cover these up right now, actually. So we don't, um, you know, so that they think they're normal. You guys are right in the flight path. That's okay though. As long as you know that. <laughs> now, if you want to get stung by a bee, brush them. They hate this. Um, not a lot. <laughs> but I am getting stung a little. I feel like a lot of relatives do. Yeah. yeah. The what? I look forward to it, yeah, in the spring, yeah. I look forward to getting stung a little. Now, this is propolis I'm scraping off here. And the bees put that on there because they wanted it to seal the box over the winter time. So that's another thing, you know, if you're, if you're deciding and you're reading a bunch of stuff on the internet about adding winter ventilation and all of that. Um, <clears throat> but if you would only take a look at the bees, the bees are going to tell you in no uncertain terms, they want to control the inside of that environment. They don't want you to add ventilation to them because they want to seal it. And if the entrance in the front is enough for them to manage the hive gases all winter long. All right, they can keep that out there as long as they want at this point. <laughs> you guys are killing brood. <clears throat> killing brood. All right, so this is like a double insulation now. Good size bee, right? This is a nice bee. Decent size. I could release this. I could direct release this queen, but I'm going to show you the way that you should probably do it when you install a package. So you don't say on Facebook or something that you saw somebody do it different by New England Apier. So I'm gonna make a little hole in this comb, right, where I'm gonna put the cage. And then you'll see it'll come right off, this comb will come right off the, and now I'm scraping it down to what we refer to as the midrib. All right, so see I made a nice little place to put that cage. All right, so we're gonna you guys are running out of time with the queen. <laughs> yeah, you can't see her anyway, so what's the difference? <laughs> now I'm going to put the, I have to remove the plug, right, that's in the candy side of this. If you remove this plug, right, the queen can just walk out, right? So we're going to delay her introduction into the colony like you should do by removing the plug on this end, the candy plug, and then allowing the bees to chew through this candy and then release the queen naturally. Now, there's a tendance in this little box, right? This is called um, a three hole. This is a Benton style uh, queen box, All right? There's three holes. This hole is filled with candy and then these two holes are empty. 
Now, if one of those, if those uh, attendants were to die, and I had it up this way, right, in the colony, it could, they could do what? They blocked the whole queen, wouldn't be able to get out. So whenever you put in your queen cage for the bees to eat through the candy and then release the queen, the candy plug has to be up, right? And the likelihood of the, of the queen getting trapped at that point is nil, really, actually. All right? So we'll put it in this side, like that, nice and, it's nice down there, nice and firm. We have to figure out where that is on the other side because we have to make the identical slot. So what I do is I just usually put it like this and then I try to get an impression with this comb where it is. So we'll try to get just a kind of an impression of it, right? It ain't that easy to do usually. So let's plug in the candy a different color so you can tell them apart. Uh, the candy is the candy's on top. Yeah. See the candy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. No, and that's another thing. Because the other comb would block the bees from feeding the queen. All right. If I lay it down this way, you mean? then the other comb covers the cage. All right, so the, the queen, it has to be like this, so there's space for the bees to go ahead and, and feed the queen and take care of her until the bees release her. All right, so it has to be this way. You have to do anything with the candy or just You don't, you can, that candy's nice and soft, you don't have to do anything with it. If you have real hard candy in it, then, um, then you have to soften it a little bit, and you can do that with a nail. Now, um, you can just put a nail, I'm gonna try to get that. Oh. Look at that. Killed that bee. All right, I guess I kill thousands of bees every year. <laughs> you can't keep bees without killing a few. I hate to tell you that. what it seems like. And that's what it is. I think this is about right. Now this, you hear the crunchy sound? Yeah. That's, that, those are cocoons. So that, you know, you know a bee spins a cocoon once it becomes a uh, pupa. In the pre-pupa stage, it's spinning a cocoon. Let's see if these fit now. Oh, see, they know where their queen is. Yeah, well, well that one, yeah. So, okay, so there it is. The queen cage is squashed in the middle there, yep. right? And it has an open face. The candy plug is up, and I removed the cork. So the bees can get in there, they'll eat that candy, they'll probably release her in a day. And these, and these frames fit together real nice. You don't have to use any fancy stapling or anything. Draw and comb now with foundation, it's different, right? You have to suspend the queen in between two empty combs of foundation and you have to actually attach that strap onto the top of one of these frames. Use an elastic band or something like that. To hold the queen cage in all right on foundation it's different than drawn comb right all right so we're going to leave these right here like that why don't we just leave them here now we're going to shake these bees into the colony now they um are going to learn right away that they live here and i'll show you what happens now uh you'll see on your favorite uh facebook Page, you'll see them bang this colony when they first get it. But did you, do you really want to bang that queen around? You know, I don't want to do that. Right, so there's no queen and no candy and no, no jar in this now. Now you can bang it and all you are is pissing off workers. You're not killing your queen. So that, then you can bang it on the ground and get all the bees down. There they are on the bottom. See them? Now you get this baby out of your way and now you just dump them in. Okay, that that bee. See, that bee came right out of the box because, well, it's, they're pissed off. I don't blame them. They haven't had anything to eat. Okay, so we're just going to go back and forth till we get a big bump of bees in there. Now, they don't all come out at once. Then you got to do it again. See, bang it down. Get them all on one side. Keep shaking them in. Now, I don't think that bee meant to sting my forehead. I'm not taking it personal. <laughs> <laughs>
I spent some time uh, last summer in Thailand looking for, uh, with a couple of entomologists from the, the um, Florida State University, and they, um, uh, we went out looking for Dorsata, which is the largest honeybee in the world. And uh, we got stung by that bee a few times. As a matter of fact, it sent some students home. All right, so we put in the um, outside two frames, right, that I took out. I'm going to put these two out in, back in. And then we're going to put our queen in, in the middle frames. See, and there, and there, you'll see it'll come right up and want to be with her. We just installed a package of bees. How about that? 